Just a brief about Smart Republic. Uh, this was an initiative which was started in uh, 2015. We are currently running the fourth edition of it. Uh, 2015 was when uh, the Indian Smart Cities mission was uh, announced. And there was lots of uh, discussion during that time whether smart cities are about technology or about uh, urban issues. In order to bring all the stakeholders onto a single platform, we started this initiative uh, uh, of Smart Republic where we said, uh, you know, the word republic actually means that everything has to be citizen-centric. When we define smart cities, can we define based upon what the citizens want and then uh, do the programs accordingly? Smart Republic would not only be about smart cities, but also about smart villages. So in the last year, the focus was on both smart cities and smart villages. Today, after four years, uh, we have many partners. We have UN Habitat, we have UN University Portugal, we have Nordic Innovation, Embassy of uh, Netherlands has been uh, with us uh, since the beginning and under this initiative we have we have created a knowledge portal for the smart cities and this year the focus is on how do we build the capacities of cities not only to work individually and create uh, solutions in silos but can they uh, co-create solutions which can be used uh, through shared services platforms for all the cities together. So that's, that's the brief, and uh, with that, uh, we will start our uh, inaugural sessions. Today, uh, we do see a lot of urban expansion. Urban expansion is much higher than the growth of population. And cities today from, uh, form a kind of a magnet for people. And uh, we experience every day how cities are growing and becoming the beating heart of our society. And in 2050, around 75% of the world population will be living in cities. 75%. And according to data from the Research Institute of Oxford Economics, all of the 10 fastest growing cities in the world are here in India. So that's a huge challenge, but also a huge opportunity, I think, for India. I would say a smart city is where digital meets infrastructure and humanity, where we connect digital opportunities with infrastructural challenges and with the improvement of human lives. And it's my opinion a very nice coincidence that the 100 smart city program by the Modi government seeks also a solution for a better living in urban areas, just as the people in Gujarat did 6,000 years ago. But the context, of course, has changed dramatically. And now we have seen the first batches of smart cities being selected, and Dutch companies have been engaged in implementing consultancy work to develop the master plan for these smart cities. In the Netherlands, we have a very dense population, so we were always challenged to create maximum value for our public spaces. This combined with world renowned knowledge of urban planning, water management, and resource efficiency has made us experts in bringing together functional design and people. We believe in building with nature, not fighting against nature. And as a final note, I would like to put on record our cooperation with the World Bank. I believe that this sets a good example for our cooperation on our wider common SDG agenda. And I look very much forward to extending this cooperation in the next Yes. We believe strongly that uh, India is, was, is what China was for the millennium, millennium goals. And this means that if India will not succeed on all these goals, the 17 goals that we have, the, the sustainable development goals are not going to uh, succeed. This is our approach. This is why we are building our strategic relationship with India on pillars which are identified by the SDGs. And we have one very strong pillar, which is urban, urbanization, uh, SDG number 11. And we have done, since I came here, a lot uh, to try to put meat to the bone of a collaboration between India and Denmark on this, uh, on this agenda. More than 400 million people moving from the rural areas to the cities. You are seeing this 
sort of turning around from 3070 to 7030 in a very, very short time. We are here in Delhi, uh, 24 million people growing 5% a year. This is more than my capital, Copenhagen, every year. And that is what has to be, to be managed in, in this approach. What we have transfer the knowledge, the experience, the technologies, uh, the best practices uh, in order for us to support the incredible journey India is on to becoming one of the, uh, sec the second largest economy in the world. We are setting up this urban living lab where the idea is to get Danish, Nordic, international knowledge to the table, invite people from around the smart cities in India to come to this lab and, and work on specific issues in order for us to be able to, to transfer some of the knowledge, some of the experiences that we have had in, in, in our urban development. We would like India to succeed not only because that would be nice, but also because we would like the SDGs to succeed. Thank you for your attention. We are very committed uh, to partnering with India for this and for, for all uh, very good reasons. Uh, and uh, Prime Minister Modi's visit uh, to the Nordic region, when Prime Minister Löfven ma met with Prime Minister Modi, they oversaw the signing both of a joint action plan with eight focus areas. In the joint action plan, smart cities, sustainable transport, and waste to energy, or key areas for cities, were uh, focused and highlighted uh, in the discussions. Uh, we have a government agency in Sweden called Vinova, and they have been tasked by our government uh, with a nice uh, little fund, uh, seed money of 50 million Swedish kroner, uh, to be in charge of uh, this particular venue and a particular avenue of collaboration. The vast and expanding Indian market, a great indigenous tradition of innovation and a huge talent pool here in India speaks volumes for this. Sweden is a front runner in, in uh, important fields of technology and innovation. Uh, we tend to rank high, uh, very high in international comparisons of uh, innovation. Rapid urbanization puts a lot of pressure on housing. Uh, it creates pollution. Uh, we know a thing or two about that here in Delhi and other places. Congestion, security concerns. But at the same time, of course, um, expanding cities are key engines for growth, for business, and for creating new and better opportunities for improving people's lives, such as 5G, optic fiber cable uh, backbones, Wi-Fi hotspots that are inbuilt in city infrastructures, wireless vehicle connectivity, as well as cloud computed control and command centers for public safety surveillance, traffic management, e-governance, the list goes on and on. These are things that, that we both as a government and through companies based in Sweden, developing in Sweden and abroad, have um, quite a lot of experience from um, by now. Thank you. I think that uh, people are aware that the United States government is very committed to the partnership with India, and we're also working with India uh, and neighboring countries to promote connectivity and commerce throughout this entire Indo-Pacific region. Our partnership with India has been very strong and it's growing. Among the most promising areas where we can expand and deepen our partnership with India is in infrastructure development, creating well-designed, Highly livable cities across the country is integral to the effort of increasing everyone's quality of life. Similarly, the U.S. Trade and Development Agency is actively engaged to help India uh, make its smart cities a success. I mentioned the cities of Ajmer, Allahabad, and Vizag. These are three of the partner cities with U.S. TDA, TDA. So finally, technology is not all that is needed to ensure that these projects succeed. Strong local governance is key to the, success, uh, to the success of these projects. In a federal system like that in, the, in India or the United States, our central governments do not have the time, authority, or resources to manage the affairs of all cities and states. Development of strong and effective municipal governance is crucial to building and maintaining these smart cities. Both the United States government and U.S. companies support India's smart city mission, and we are eager to collaborate with Indian officials and businesses 
to help achieve success. Thank you all for your attention and your commitment to the growth of the economic relationship between our two countries. Nordic Innovation is an organization under the uh, Nordic Council of Ministers, and it, it basically encompasses a total of, uh, of, of the five countries in the Nordics and the two self-governing areas, the Faroe Islands and the Orland Islands. So basically, the Nordic region has a population the size of Delhi. We have 27 million people, so it's, uh, it's in the aspects or compared to India, it's rather small. Uh, nevertheless, we do have um, top scores on trust, and environment, and gender equality. Um, we're one of the most educated populations in the world. As has already been mentioned by both Klaas and Peter, uh, it was very important for the Nordics to be visited by His Excellency the Prime Minister Moody uh, in 2018. So in a Nordic perspective, um, there are several things that we see as being a cornerstone in a sustainable city. Uh, it's important that the city is inclusive. It's important that we look at urban health. The, this is the harbour front in Oslo, in Norway, where it used to be an old industrial harbour. But now, um, as you can see, it's open to the public and uh, the water has been cleaned up, so you can now actually go swimming all year round. Another example here from Reykjavik, where we use uh, a smart platform so that citizens can actually be uh, participating in decision making and how the money should be spent in the municipality. Speaking about smart here, the uh, Helsinki in Finland has a lot of air sensors that basically monitor uh, the air quality uh, on a continuous basis. Low carbon city, um, we've actually managed to bring down the CO2 emissions substantially in the Nordics while economic growth has still continued. I think that these are, are potentials for collaboration with the Indian cities, and we very much look forward to continue that. And I wish you all a very good conference. Thank you. In the World Bank, we have for a number, many years in the ICT group, now Digital Development Group, been advancing the benefits of going digital in terms of new insights, uh, contribution to productivity, um, amplifying and accelerating positive change. What we see in the area of smart city endeavour is that issue around integrating so many of uh, domains and sectors and functions where the experiences of people and their lives are actually um, either improved or made more complicated or congested or difficult. On the dais here, where bilateral relations are now the sort of blending of the interests of many countries together with India to actually learn and advance this notion of the smart republic. It's more than technology, it's around citizens at the centre of many of these pieces of work. Number 17 on partnerships is not just a word, it's actually going to be generating more value through this e ecosystem that sustainable cities and communities are not just words at number, or numbers at number 11, but the means by which many people uh, will be living and, and existing over the next decades. And that number nine, which is certainly important to the digital development group in the World Bank, where enabling the infrastructure and the connectivity is again as much about technology as about relationships. We look forward to uh, your active engagement over the course of the next two days, but then again, um, beyond those two days, actually making a difference to the lives of many on the ground. So thanks very much for coming. Stay and make, make this a really powerful set of discussions. Thank you.